Hey there, I'm Mark from Spectrum Pulse, and today, Chapel Roan versus Eminem. We'll see where that goes. And this, it's Billboard Breakdown. I don't remember. One thing I can appreciate about an otherwise normal week on the Hot 100 is that it's defined by its contrast. The past versus the future, the old and the new, the reactionary and progressive. All of which drives up discourse in the comments section and if I don't read it, I won't get a splitting headache. Truth be told though, I think the charts are going to be relatively stable for a decent bit until the next big album bomb. So the question will be if any of the tracks landing this week are going to get further momentum. But before we get to that, our top 10, where for another week I had some help by Post Malone featuring Morgan Wallen held the number one, although at this point it's more precarious than ever. Yes, it is strong in streaming, but it's not at the top, and if it wasn't for a strident radio push, it would not have held against competition and probably won't next week. And that's partially because our number two is our big debut, Houdini by Eminem. I'll save my comments for much later on, but dominance on streaming and sales means that he barely even needed radio to debut this high. Although the streaming case here is interesting. I have to wonder if his long entrenched monthly listener bulwark was so huge that this song was going to land big regardless of any, you know, quality. Whatever the case, it did beat out Million Dollar Baby by Tommy Richmond at number three, where that radio push really kicked into high gear alongside some pretty stable streaming. In a different time, this probably would have gone to number one, but the second quarter of 2024 has been an absolute gauntlet to chase the top spot, almost historically so compared to the last couple of years. And thus, I'm still a little bit shocked that a bar song tipsy by Shabuzi's at number four. The radio push has felt a little bit slower, and while the streams are still rock solid, I think it's continued edge, it's coming on the sales. Now compare this to Not Like Us by Kendrick Lamar at number five, where the radio growth has kept steady and it's got better streams, but as the beef has cooled off, the sales have fallen off sharply. And I would not put money on this being a continued challenger for the top spot. Frankly, I'm still shocked it's had this much momentum for so long. Then we got Espresso by Sabrina Carpenter at number six. I could make the point of highlighting how this is kind of stabilized on streaming and sales despite continued radio growth, and thus it probably will not get any higher. But given that her next single has a chance to debut and challenge for the number one next week, I reckon she's just going to be fine. Then we got Too Sweet by Hosier at number Number seven, which just keeps getting more radio and had a good sales week to boot, compensating for streams mostly being flat, but it was enough to get over Loose Control by Teddy Swims at number eight, where the fall off has been gradual enough that he probably doesn't care that much, especially as he's gotten a number one before and with the next single is debuting this week. Then we got Beautiful Things by Benson Boone at number nine. It's got a margin on streams, but it loses it on sales, and the radio, it's also on decline, but it was just enough to to hold over Pink Skies by Zach Bryan at number 10, which saw a drop off on streams and sales, but considering the radio still isn't touching him at all, the consistent strength there feels very revealing. Now compare this to our Losers and Dropouts, where we didn't really get that many of the latter this week, outside of Bandit by Don Tolliver leaving once again, and both Meet the Grams by Kendrick Lamar and Push Ups by Drake showing their historical place in this beef by rotating out, the biggest exit here is probably Red Rum by 21 Savage, a song I actually still like, but amidst the rest of the rap that's been delivered this year, it's mostly faded into the background. Speaking of which, when we go to our losers, both Euphoria by Kendrick Lamar slid down to 33, and Family Matters by Drake fell to 69, the position's still being kind of indicative of who won this. It'll be interesting to see if any of these last long in order to clinch a year-end list spot. Then we got Si No Es Contigo by Chris MJ sliding off the debut to 82, and and Texas Hold'em by Beyonce continuing its steady decline down to 65. She's already got that year-end list position sewed up. She's fine here. You know, she could start pushing other singles anytime. Which takes us to Where It Ends by Bailey Zimmerman now hitting 43. I expect it's going to be off the charts soon given that the radio is pulling back. Kind of a shame because it'll probably wind up missing the year-end list and I do like the song but them's the breaks. Finally, we got the Billie Eilish album bomb cuts that are decaying naturally. L'Amour de Ma Vie at 46, 
67, The Greatest at 62, Skinny at 68, The Diner at 73, and Bittersweet at 89. And that takes us to our returns and gains. Well, the one return. Spin you around by Morgan Wallen and crept back at 95. I don't have much faith it's going to stick around for long. Now, the gains here are again a bit more interesting because I'm not seeing much of a pattern beyond, of all things, Gunna actually having a good week with On One Tonight at 88 and One of One up to 31. I'm more interested in some of our continued gains like Wondering Why by the Red Clay Strays picking up to 76 and Stargazing by Miles Smith continuing to rise at 41. But the big story is Wannabe by Glorilla and Megan the Stallion at 15. Chalk this up to a massive surge on streaming, even some radio, although it might be the case of the Cardi B remix doing some heavy lifting here. Speaking of Cardi, Enough Miami looks like it's finally gotten a boost to 64, although any radio she has isn't that stable. And outside of her, Sino Cuerez No by Luis R. Conriquez and Netan Vega hit 53. Scared to Start by Michael Markegi hit 60. And most frustratingly, Illusion by Dua Lipa is at 59. There's enough radio that might make this a thing. Oh joy. But that takes us to our new arrivals. And unfortunately, we have to start off with number 98, Let Your Boys Be Country by Jason Aldean. You would think after Try That in a Small Town failed to really move the needle for Aldine's career and sales, as the album backing it in November wound up as his worst performing project, as I predicted, that the audience might abandon him altogether. Unfortunately, Jason Aldean's still one of the largest breadwinners on Broken Bow, and that meant that the second single, it's gonna get pushed to Nashville radio regardless. And, okay, look. It's tempting to go digging for the dog whistles here. It's not like Al Dean hasn't earned that, but this is a nothing of a song. The sterile fake hand clap, the over-polished percussion, all the filmy backing vocals, the blocky major key riffs, and the checklist of basic country things that Jason Aldean wants boys to be allowed to do. It's basically a stock Jason Aldean song down to the barely perceptible right-leaning bent, where he's not even saying the boys have to do this, or listening to anything that they shouldn't do. Hell, I don't think they're being barred from doing any of this. In other words, it's just too boring to get mad at or really remotely care about. Let's move on. Number 94, The Door by Teddy Swims. But I can't take this This was always going to be the test for Teddy Swims to see if his pop cachet has any sustainability, whether or not this becomes that second hit. And given that I'm generally lukewarm at best on Loose Control, I was curious to see where this would wind up and okay, I hear the appeal. A lot more here. I like this. A big factor is that groove, a really solid bass line, gentle percussion to supplement it, with slight touches of guitar and arranged swell lingering to amplify that swagger, maybe a shade too much reverb for this brand of soul. But in capturing that 2010s pop soul vibe, it is effective, and Teddy Swims is one hell of a singer in order to sell it. But what might properly clinch it for me are the lyrics. It's rare that a breakup song carries this much swing, but there comes a point in a bad off and on and off again relationship where even if you're head over heels, you need to create the exit and you need to end it. And the blur of anger and relief nails that feeling of catharsis really well, especially in the come down from the bigger histrionics on the verses. So uh, yeah. Really good song. If you're not sold on Tenny Swims, this might be up your alley. Give it a shot. Number 90, Nasty by Tinashe. There's a lot I could say about Tanache returning to the Hot 100 for the first time in eight years, but truth be told, I don't really think I'm the best person to say it. For those who remember my rather contentious reviews of her albums, I've never been a big Tanache fan, but in retrospect, I think I can lay a lot more blame on RCA for mishandling her the way they do so many R&B acts, and thus when she went indie, 
full disclosure, while the reviews, they've seemed to be positive, I wasn't that interested in hearing more. I haven't really kept up with her. But then this song went viral on TikTok, which became her first independent single to really take off, and okay, I get it, but it doesn't really do a lot for me. Tanache's flat, I've been a nasty girl delivery doesn't have the flair to be that sensual or playful. And by the time the bass thrum matches that faint melody in the drum machine, it feels like an old formula that's catchy, but not that impressive from her. I also think some of that's the lyrics, which had the vibe of Tanache thinking that she's hot as all hell and looking for someone in order to match her vibe. But when you're only lukewarm on that vibe, the energy just doesn't quite get there. I mean, it's okay. I get why it's working on TikTok. Just not for me, I guess. Number 80, Hot To Go by Chapel Rowan. to a note that I think is considerably more positive, this is the first of two Chapel Roan songs to land on the Hot 100. And as someone who just loved her album from last year, this is an absolute delight for me. Now I will say this is not one of my personal favorites, we'll get to the one that is in a bit, but I still generally like how campy and silly it all is, flipping a pizza delivery pun to imply all the horniness. And when you get that chintzy synth and the glittery cymbals on the new wave guitar that sparks over the hook, along just how hard Chapel Roan is vamping, I get why folks are making the Cindy Lauper comparisons. I also get a lot of theater girl vibes that are spilling over the song, but that also kind of works for me. And showcasing a pop star who genuinely cares and is probably trying a lot harder than I think anyone expected or she needed to. The fact that this song is not more embarrassing, that is a testament to her talent. So yeah, a lot of fun, good song, perhaps not as much as... Number 75, Red Wine Supernova by Chapel Rowan. Over, red wine supernova, falling into me. Let's pick it up now. Yeah, so this is one of my favorite songs of last year, not just hits, so it almost feels unfair to just rattle off everything that utterly rules about this and that I still love to this day. I love those rattling acoustics that ramp into the bassy synth and bounce into a vibe that's so ragged even as the synths spill over to the glitter smeared hook that ramps into that perfect gallop for the second half. I love the call and response between Chapel Road and her backup singers with more harmony than you would ever expect. I mean, we're still in pure camp mode here, but when the hook has her actually stretch into it, this elegant choral register before she rebounds into the more playful verses in the bridge. It is just pure magic for me. And the writing. It's queer, it is unapologetically horny, and most importantly, it's so much fun. It captures the vibe that remembers that sex can be a little bit goofy, especially when the infatuation translates to something more ruckus. It's hedonistic, it's splashy, it's remarkably quotable to the point I'm a little shocked TikTok hasn't utterly run away with it. The sort of pop song I'm so thrilled has finally hit the Hot 100. Dear God, find a way, make this a proper hit. And finally, number two... Houdini by Eminem. I'm about to reach in my back, bro. Do I have to? Can we not end this on Chapel Roan? Not Eminem sampling the Steve Miller band's Abracadabra, a song I don't even think the fans of that band like, for this tired retread of Without Me that misses so much of what made that song actually kind of good? Speaking as someone who can rap all of Without Me from memory, what I think gets lost on people is that that song was considered something of a sequel slash retread at the time of the real Slim Shady, which I also know by heart and I consider to be a better song. No, I'm not going to perform any of them for you. but. Let's start with the obvious. The production here sounds canned and chintzy, but unlike the garish crossover singles that worked, this feels so tired, maybe anchored in how Eminem still can't sing on that hook, or how the production just can't emphasize any flair or color. And it feels stiffer too. There isn't that fluid low-end bounce in the same way. Not helped by Eminem's increasingly bad habit of sounding so jittery and self-impressed with every punchline. It's not as labored as it's been in the past, it's just still very annoying when it just compromises the flow. Then we got the content, where 
I'm not offended by any of this. I get the feeling the album's going to be finally taking the piss out of Slim Shady and just end it. This may work better in that context, where it seems like between the lines, many of the jokes feel like they're at his own expense, and they don't have the timbre of feeling that reactionary. The old Slim Shady would have made a lot of the bad gay jokes. He says it himself on the bridge, but he follows it with a line, how many little kids still want to act like me? Or the guy who will call himself white trash and then wear a Bud Light shirt. I see what you're doing. Honestly, as much as I think Eminem wants to goad people into censorship or getting cancelled, I don't see enough folks getting angry enough to care when you can tell his heart isn't really in it the same way it was 20 years ago. I have seen more millennials on TikTok yelling about Eminem getting cancelled than anyone actually trying to cancel Eminem. I mean, my issue is that the jokes just aren't very good. Trying to suck up to Megan the Stallion with a shooting a feet bar, the participation trophy line on the throwaway second verse, that really forced R. Kelly line, all the trans jokes that feel really try hard, trying to bring back Paul Rosenberg yet again, so probably better than anything that Paul was doing at Def Jam in the late 2010s, but that's a different conversation. I mean, I'm sorry, it does not have the weight of when there were legit censors, including the Secret Service, that targeted Eminem in 2003 and 2017. Yes, Trump's Secret Service went after Eminem at the time. And while there might have been a deeper underlying critique of nostalgia here for Slim Shady with this song being a self-fulfilling prophecy, M's done that before on Encore, it just doesn't make for a very good song. I've got no real reason to seek it out, and it doesn't live up to the best that he's done before. I'm gonna say it, worst of the week, running purely on my disappointment, even though I should know better, because I hear the potential... But I can't back it, I'm sorry. Best of the week is Chapel Rome with Red Wine Supernova, an absolutely wonderful song that I really hope sticks around. And for next week, looks like Sabrina Carpenter is going to challenge for that top spot. And maybe along the way, we might get something from Charlie XCX and Brat. Maybe that'll break through. We'll have to see. But until then, I'm Mark. You're watching Billboard Breakdown, affiliated with Spectrum Pulse. And I'll see you next time.